Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegand, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The Township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heika when the postmaster general informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heika? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heika. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish, but when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Haika. Two miles west of Haika, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore, and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heika and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Grover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heika, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. Okay, we're here at Bondi's Corners, and this is the famous Peter Bondi's store. That's presently a home and some uh, other things. And uh, the Octagon building is going to be coming through this area to the north. And up the road is the Octagon Should be about crossing Highway C And we're just standing a little bit north of Highway 42 garage, uh, Highway 42 rather And again, this is part of Bondi's Corners. Again, we're looking north up Union Road. Battery problem, but we're back in business here, and Charlie will uh, indicate what we what we're doing here today. Yeah, I put a new battery in myself, so now I can talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> we got a truck going by here, making a little noise. Okay, good. But we're, we're standing just a little uh, south of Bondi's Road, okay. on Union Road here, and if we look this way, yes. you're going to see State Road 42. Okay. And then further on down, I believe the Octagon Dance Hall is sitting at Highway C. All right. We're going to cross Highway C and then come north again, and the old road before it was highway 42 was known as the old green bay road all right and if you pan over to the the white building there with the with the green roof on yes sir that used to be elm grove school okay then before that it was newton district number two and if you notice the, the break in the trees they're kind of like a v-shaped dip there yes that's where the old green bay road came down okay and it went on the west side of where that mobile home is on the farm over there Okay, gotcha. And then it would follow around the back of the buildings here. Okay. And come out on the north side of the house and in front of the store. Okay. And now it's called Bondi Road. Bondi Road, right. Okay. A familiar territory here, and Mr. Barr will... Uh, old stomping ground here. Yes, his old stomping <laughs> ground. I'm standing in my mother's driveway as, okay. as I'm talking to the camera here. And my, my dad built this home here in 74. Oh, <laughs> 74. 74, yes. okay. Our, we were kind of debating whether or not between the, the old general store here, the, the white or grayish color building on the, on the left, and the Highway 42 garage, or how much space is in between there. And it's, I think it's going to be like shoving a uh, thread through a needle's eye. It's yeah. going to be pretty tight. <laughs> pretty tight, okay. And we're still heading down Union Road for a little more distance. Yeah, about another two miles or so. Okay, yeah. very good, thank you. I'm here and uh, they're going to give us a little information and I'll start with the one that has the colored vest. Go right ahead, please. That would be me? Yes. I'm Charlie Bauer. We're standing here at what's known as Bondi's Corners. And as 
far as the total length of the, of the route that the dance hall has to travel, it's uh, 11 and a half, 13 and a half miles. Okay. And uh, it's high noon here. Okay. And I'm standing here with Mr. Bushman. All right. And he's an old musician. Okay, and Mr. Bushman, I understand you uh, do some musical things, and could you give us something like that? Well, they had their big uh, farm pro program last Sunday, and uh, they had a very nice turnout there. Where, where was this now? At, uh, at Pinecrest well, Village. Pinecrest Village, okay. And they, they informed me that they were about to move this uh, uh, building. Yes. And I went out to see it on Friday. All and right. it was already off the foundation. They were ready to put it on the truck. Okay. And here it is Tuesday. It's in the middle of the road. I've seen it twice already <laughs> this morning. You know, we're just watching it as it crosses Highway 42. Okay. And uh, musician-wise, what uh, do you? Who do you play for? And what do you play for an instrument? Well, I've uh, I've got two instruments. One is a button accordion. Okay. And one is a concertina. All right. And between the, both of them, I like them both. Okay. And I like to stay in. Uh, Pinecrest Village. Uh, okay. It's it's their kind of thing. That's right. There. That's right. And now with this uh, octagon building, I think you're going to be called upon a few more times because I'm this is sure the that one Chuck, that Chuck Beckus is going to be having us in there. Okay. Very shortly. Wonderful. I'm yes. glad to hear that. Yes. And your full name again, sir? Andy Bushman. And Andy, how old, if I may ask, are you? I'm past 39. <laughs> Days, Couple huh? days past 39. <laughs> well, you're certainly enjoying life and looking good, sir. Well, thank you and very it, kindly. <laughs> can I ask you a question, Andy? Who was your dad? What was his name? Andrew. Andrew Bushman. Yes, and I'm Andrew Jr. Okay, Andrew Jr. okay. That's, well, that's the connection there. Okay. So. Question also, how long have you been associated with Pinecrest Village? Since 1970, originally when they put their first building into the area. Okay, wow. Do you uh, right. help? Hugo Vetting is a personal friend. He was very good to me. Okay. And for a long time, I was I was always close to him, and of course, uh, he got the best of me. Eventually, yeah. he died. Okay. What other duties do you do besides play the button boxes and so forth at Pinecrest? Do you do anything else there? You're not supposed to work after you retire. <laughs> Is there a? But I get caught every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hard, fast rule at all, is it? <laughs> no, no, no rules. No, no rules. <laughs> well, I do thank you for sharing your uh, story here, and I uh, appreciate it very much. And good luck to you in the future. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Look at wire, and then the crew behind has got to hook it back up again. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, I guess the patrol cars are moving into position on Highway 42 to stop the traffic. Okay, they're making some uh, maneuvers here to drop some wires or something as before they cross Highway 42. Okay, we got Grandma Bauer and uh, Mr. Bushman, and then and that is your brother, Charlie? Yes, Jerry, my Jerry? oldest brother. Oldest brother, they're down right on the corner of Highway 42 and Union Road, observing all the activity that's happening here right at this intersection. And there's many a, a truck here, which is needed for the power lines to be either dropped, held higher, or cut entirely. Do you have some information on it, Jim? Yeah. On this thing, and then we'll let the bother anybody else. And who are you with? I'm with the uh, defense school of the police district. Great. Don. Uh, Teresa Nenig. Teresa Nenig? Yeah. Oh, oh, Teresa's tavern is called, huh? Yeah. The, the, tavern, the tavern was gone. This was the dance hall behind it. 
an mm -hmm. open-air pavilion. Her father built that, Joe Nenning, back in 1900. Mm -hmm. I just needed yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, they're lifting up the wires with the cherry picker to clear the crest of the roof. Yeah, the shadow is on the other side of the wire already. Yeah. That didn't take him long. No, oh, all I needed to get him through here. We're moving past Peter Bondi's store at this time, heading north with the Octagon Dance Hall. Okay, no problem heading past Bondi's Corners. Continues to head north on Union Road. I might add that the Octagon yes. Dance Hall is probably a little bit older than the old general store there. The old general store is built in 1912. Okay. And we're, we're guessing that this was built around 1900. All right. Two great old buildings. Yes, it is. Very majestic. Here at Bondi's Corner is taking a look at the events today. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Rosenbauer. Is that an ad retired neighbors? Nothing about you. Just kind of below, you won't be here. You
just hear the purring of the motor. <laughs> That's a good idea, Charlie. <laughs> She's scrubbing the trees as we're going through the wooded area on Union Road, just after Bondi's Corners. Yeah. We're coming up to the old log cabin tavern, which is on the intersection of uh, Carson Lake Road. Okay. Okay, we're a little bit further down the road here, and uh, Mr. Bauer can indicate where we are. Yes, we, we were just down by the Low Cabin Tavern there, and that was the halfway point of coming to the township of Newton. Okay. And we're up at the intersection of Wayhausen Road and Union Road, and here they will be making a left-hand turn, okay. heading west on Wayhausen Road for a half mile until they get to Brunner Road. Okay. And sure. I suppose you can't hardly see it down there, but it's just past the trees down there, and then we'll be going to the right. To the right, okay, very good. And behind you, Charlie, is a huge crop of what? Soybeans. Soybeans. Soybeans, yes. Beautiful. They look like they're ready for combining. Yes, they do. <laughs> okay, so we've got a. Up against the cars, <laughs> so there you go, Red Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Jason, maybe I can indicate uh, what we're up to today and what your duties are today. Basically, uh, County Sheriff's Department's involved in traffic control at the intersections for the moving of the dance hall okay. down in Cleveland up to Pine River Historical Village. Okay, very good. So, and we started at about 8 o'clock this morning. Okay. And. That's basically it as far as we're concerned. We just want to make sure that there aren't any uh, crashes that occurred <laughs> right. while this thing is being moved. Right. People get anxious sometimes and don't realize what's happening or what's coming up. Exactly. Especially when it takes up 43 feet. It's 43 <laughs> feet wide. So, it's really? So, oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> so and, it takes uh, up quite a bit of space. And Jason, uh, now uh, just a little bit about your personal uh, things a little bit. Now, you, you went to school and so forth. Could you identify yourself a little bit more and where you went to school and how long you've been on, on this kind of an occupation? Sure. I graduated from LTC back in 1993, I get 92, excuse me. Okay. And started down in the city of Janesville as a full-time police officer. Okay. Came back up here in 97. Okay. And been working here since then. And promoted to sergeant last year. Oh, so wonderful. Congratulations. congratulations. Very good. Everything's been going pretty good. Great, great. No complaints. <laughs> None that you want I to suppose put you are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the I first one. I everybody could complain, but... <laughs> Uh, we don't like to listen to complaints. No, no. Well, I'm good. No, everything's going good. Very good, very good. And you live in Manitowoc now, or do you still live out in the country? Or? I live in Manitowoc. You live in Manitowoc. Okay, yeah. very good. Well, thank you very much, They're sir. on the way here, so. Yeah, okay. It goes pretty quick. Thank you. Especially when you get some of that graduate, you Sure. Yes. <laughs> we're still on Union Road, and we're coming to the end of that uh, transport on that particular highway. We're about to turn on to Wayhausen Road. That's an old dump rake. Haven't seen one of those for a long time. Used to ride one of them things with the, not with the horses too much, with the tractor. Yes, <laughs> we follow you right to the ends of the earth. Again, we're on the corner of Union Road and Wayhausen Road. We're going to be making a turn onto Wayhausen Road. Of 
Okay, they're doing a measurement here of the power lines. It may be high enough. I believe it was somebody mentioned 26 feet, three inches. And it may be enough to clear the top of the building. Clear that wire. Okay, they're now on Wayhausen Road. Okay, we're going to be heading down Brunner Road, going north one more time. You can see how the, the guy driving the truck has to maneuver way on the other side of the road and off to the opposite side just to try to avoid mailboxes, signs, so that they don't need to take them apart. He's got to be pretty, pretty up on things. Of course, he has some guidance from front and back with uh, hand signals, I believe. But we're heading down Wayhausen Road right now, heading west. And Charlie, you got some more information about our location and what's up, uh, what's ahead of us? Yes, we're at the intersection of Wayhausen Road and Brunner Road, and this intersection will give us 10 miles from our start point. Okay. And All we'll right. have approximately one mile left in the town of Newton. All right. And then we'll cross into Manitowoc Rapids. Okay. And our next uh, English Lake Road is the crossing road, is that English right? English Lake Road is the crossing road, yes. Okay. And again, you, we've traveled 10 miles in how many hours, sir? Uh, I don't know what time it is, Jerry. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me put it on the clock put here. Put it on the clock. Okay. It's uh, 1.37. Uh, we left at 8 this morning, so we got, uh, what's that? That would be uh, four, about five and a half hours. Okay. Okay, we should be okay. Uh, arrive maybe at 3 o'clock or 3.30. It depends how many wires slows us down. And that seems to be the biggest thing, wires slowing us down. Okay, very good. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Took a view of this uh, stop sign and its uh, road marking because it's coming out of the ground. They'll jack it out of there. We're 
Okay, he's going to make a turn here onto Runner Road. Man, that's a long post. Okay, the stop sign and the road marking post for Brunner and Weyhausen Road is now lying down. And they'll now proceed to make the corner. Okay, Mr. Bauer is uh, still with me here. We're hanging together pretty good, and uh, he'd like to provide some more information as yes, to. Yes, my cameraman is now standing in Manitowoc Rapids. At, at this intersection here, we leave the town of Newton, and we come into Manitowoc Rapids, and we'll have 11 miles of our journey completed at this intersection. Another two and a half to go, and we'll be in the backside of the Pine, Pine Crest Historic Village. Very good, Charlie. Very good. And it looks like uh, the. The uh, unit is coming down the road way in the background there, looking south. And uh, it shouldn't take them that long because of what, Charlie? We don't really have any problems with... Yes, there's no wires across the road there. And if the, the one that was down there, they got down already. So it's, a, it's about a 10 mile an hour speed and they'll be here in, in a few minutes, I would think. Okay. Not a lot, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to indicate here, Terry? We, uh, the next road we're going to be crossing would be what? Oh, good question. Uh, we're one, going down to... Uh, 151? I got a little gas. Uh, good question. <laughs> you got me stumped, Joe. Okay. I didn't think we are crossing 151, but we might. we're going to have to. We I have think. to, I think. We have to, to get on the other side, and I'm on the wrong page here. Okay, just one moment then. On, Charlie. Okay, then we start down here. All right. Okay. This is where we are right now? Wait a minute. You're not running, are you? Charlie. This is English Lake Road right here, and this is the intersection we're standing at. Brunner Road runs this way. We got one mile left, and then we're out of Newton. Okay, very good. Thank you. At the uh, You may disagree, I don't know. Moving right along. You really made time on that particular section of road. between Weyhausen Road and English Lake Road. Made a real good time there.
Moving right along here on Bruner Road. Just cruising right along there. here at 151 intersection and uh, they were able to clear the house by raising both the ground wire and the hot wire. Two cherry pickers working in tandem here worked out very well. We have a time on here. Let's do it. Okay, we're just crossing the Sioux Line tracks, which I believe come from Manitowoc through Valors, and I do not know a, the normal destination of it. Just are crossing over those tracks at this time. Okay, we've got 
got a tree. Very tight fit here. He's over as far as he can to the, my left. He's running a wheel right on the shoulder. And yet we're scraping trees here on this side, right on the corner of the building. Looks like things will make it okay. Okay, we're going on to Middle Road and we're going to be turning left off of Brunner. I think they're going to just try and raise the power lines again. <laughs> I don't have a crossroad on the sign there. It's got Brunner no, Road. Oh, what road is this? That's Middle Road. Middle Road, okay. Middle Road, yes. Okay. Well, that's why I walked me down here, because I was going to take a picture of where they turned. Where? Almost home with it. Wow. What about that layer there? That's just that's just a ground. That's just the ground wire. Or? No, that's just a ground wire. They're probably losing this up there. Some of them they just cut and drop down. That was two folks here who are following the procedure as far as the uh, octagon house or octagon dance hall. I'm sorry, and we have a young lady who'd like to. Identify yourself, and she's also a volunteer, I understand. Go ahead, well, please. I like your compliment, Jerry, as being a young lady. I'm Gertie Free, and we are volunteers at Pinecrest Village. And in Cleveland, we called this the, the pavilion. I don't know what, what it was called years ago, but we were just interested in seeing its history and seeing that we volunteer out there, and the floor is all laid for it. We're waiting for it to get out there. Wonderful. And how many years have you been doing this out there at Pinecrest? This is our first year of active volunteering. We've belonged to the village for about five or six years. Oh, wonderful. Great, great. Glad to hear that. Thank you. That I still remember. Yeah. That one I remember. Of all the, the, all the people that we spoke to, and some of them are a lot older than we are and have lived in the village all the years, they don't remember anything going on here. So it's been grows and yet kept up for yeah, since 50 plus years. You they, know. they said the last big doings probably took place right after World War II. And then it, then it really got slowed down. You know, that heart was ever used. You know, Buddy Yannick was born in 1930, and he said he can remember as a little type that they would go there for picnics, and he yeah. can't remember anything, you know, yeah. really in his years of life. So. The, the, the people that I...
make that turn with very much ease. Gentleman knows what he's doing. And I gotta say the I can't say enough about the coordination between the the uh, public service, the movers, the police department. They're all working so well together today and it is a great day. It's about 75 degrees I'm sure. Finally turning on to Century Road I believe on the final phase of going to Pinecrest Village. And you folks donated that? Yeah. You, you donated that? Yeah, I donated that. Wonderful. I'd like to talk to you up at the uh, Pinecrest, okay, after the they got the unit moved in place? Sure. Thank you very much. Heading up Century Road. We're at the last intersection before the building gets to its new home. We just turned on to Century Road here and it's heading north. We just catch the end of it going over the hill here. And it won't be long, we'll be at the Pinecrest Historic Village. Very good. It was a fine trip so far, and I'm sure it'll, the remainder will be just as great. And we're really looking forward to seeing where it's going to be uh, seated for the many, many years. You betcha. Thank you. Okay, we're so close to contact here. We got a gentleman pulling away at the sign so that it would clear the side wall of the building just by <laughs> eighth of an inch. Yeah, at least. <laughs> thickness of a mosquito. <laughs> I gotta say these people that do the moving they are very conscientious about what they're moving and uh, try to maintain its integrity all the way. Here we're coming very close now to Pinecrest Village. Again, they cleared the wire okay. Maybe that might be the last obstacle until we get into. Okay, this is the entrance to the field. This is a critical part here, critical moves. We were just checking to make sure these were three bulls. We just stepped into a pasture here full of horses. The last one's a nice Belgium. Okay. They don't seem too, uh, too lethal. A little inquisitive. <laughs> Actually, These are the critical tires that have got to make the curve. Back there isn't even touching at this point. There it is, engaged again. 
It's a lot of pressure. Very critical moves here, I gotta admit. Now we're in the lane in the field here. It's a very tough course, I have to admit. This one is a little, a little tough. The trail we have to follow, and uh, it's not an easy one either, right at this time where the trees are to my right. They kind of force you over, and there's a ditch on the left. So it's kind of touchy. There's no easy route here. Okay, we're like, trying to do something with the back wheels. I think we can rotate them a little bit to get the rear end over and support it because this is soft ground they're coming on to. This is a big, big unit here. And it's a small lane to go down. Made the curve okay, so they're safe there. That's the driver of the truck that's pulling the rig. Okay, we're 
Clearing the way. Okay, we're finally into the field, moving along, and it's 3.49 p.m. Anda, she's here to photograph a few things. Her husband Don does some marvelous work here from the reports I've been getting. So everybody's looking forward to this. Time, and they do it well. coming off the trail so they're taking it slow so that nothing happens looks like everything is straightening out sign says we're now on our way to historical village we're in the field of alfalfa in the back of the village and uh, no more than a quarter mile or less to the facility and the location. And Mrs. Yanda and Mrs. Frey are walking through the alfalfa field back to Pinecrest Village. Looking good, looking good. Great sight. Charlie Bauer went way ahead already. Everybody's very excited about this building arriving here at Pinecrest Historical coming in from the back area through the alfalfa nice and smooth You can see why it was called Pinecrest.
Ed Frey here? No, no. <laughs> I don't know that guy. You don't know that guy. They were glass kept now. When you're facing east, you're standing in the library door facing east, plus two windows on the right hand side. Uh, yeah. yep. Now that the, the wall on the north and this side. This is a view of Pine Crest from Isn't the that field. Isn't that beautiful in the sunset? Mm -hmm. Oh. We've got to get you to join. Oh. <laughs> you want to have to be active, active. Active, active? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I know it's, uh, it's a nice place and it's uh, got so much tradition. Don loves coming out here. I bet he does. He's so feeling quiet. And... Oh, I tell you. We're here at Pinecrest Village at a little after four in the afternoon on October 7th, and we've watched the historic movement of a, a octagon building to this wonderful location and uh, we anticipated to be uh, used many many years in the future and uh, a lot of these people are very anxious to see it come upon this uh, this hallowed ground I'll call it thank you <laughs> and I gotta turn this way yeah well you've got to spin my wheels around yeah. and then we back right in oh okay All it's right. uh well, you know it's yeah it's, it takes it takes a lot of maneuvering we gotta pick up all right equipment right. at the old site tomorrow morning and then we'll be right down here See if we can get down here. Otherwise, I'll go towards Thursday, maybe. I'm hoping well, for another day Thursday. Well, they're planning on bringing the bricks. Uh, yeah, the bricks are planning on coming. They should have saved it somewhere. Yeah. 1940s higher. They, they, they had a historic place there. I was thinking about that. They couldn't get the thing together. We have Mr. and Mrs. Ed Frey walking back to the historical village. I think if you check under the tree where the people are standing, I think that's right where the cement platform is, to where the building is. Who uh, is involved with the uh, Pinecrest uh, Adventures, and she'd like to identify herself and give us some information on what we were looking at. Okay, I'm Peg Harder, and you are enjoying the view of the uh, village behind me. Okay. And as we see it, the, what, the building that has the little steeple on it is the school, okay. often confused with the church, uh -huh. which would be to your right. Okay. Um, the um, large white building that's yes. in the foreground more is the town hall. Okay. And this building will be situated next to the town hall. Wonderful. Why not? Wonderful. Dance hall, Dance pavilion, hall. Yeah. town hall. Oh, great. And then the rest of the buildings there are identified as... Um, well, the little brick one is a okay. firehouse and so forth along okay. around the building. Well, thank you so much for the information, and we hope to see everything take place yet today. Well, we hope to see everyone out here. Thank you. See it when it's finished. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay, we're coming upon 420 in the afternoon here at Pinecrest on October 7th. And uh, we were looking over the village from the backside, if you will. And there's the slab that is to be used for the base of the octagon dance hall. It's a beautiful spot up here, I'll tell you. And you can see why they call it pine crest. Isn't it? You look around that whole perimeter. There's pine trees on all the crests all the way around. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful spot. And it should be coming pretty soon. Got some trees that were too close in there and the gateway through there was too narrow so they had to do some jockeying.
Okay, it's a beautiful fall day and we have Mr. Bauer here on the cement platform and he'll describe a little bit more about it. Go right ahead. Yes, uh, the part that I'm standing on here is the, the new band shell that they will be adding on the Octagon Dance Hall. It's bigger than the original one. And I think that was a wise idea. Yeah. And one of the pavilion doors that is on the existing building would have been on this octagon here. Okay. On that facet, and the other one would have been up there where the gravel is there. The, the, oh, okay. And it, there were double doors that opened. Oh, okay. They weren't hinges, they just okay. opened in the center. Very good. And we're just awaiting the uh, arrival and the crown jewel, if you will, to come in here. It's getting quite close. Are, are they coming now at yes, all? Yes, yes. They're starting to move. Pretty soon they'll be in your back pocket, Jerry. Oh, no. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> the problem at this point in time in the, in the afternoon. So we're moving fairly steady now through the alfalfa field up to its location. She's finally home. And Jason has been working hard all day. He says there's no problems, only setbacks. I like that, <laughs> I like that saying, Jason. I can always find Mr. Charlie Bauer. We have the colorful vest on. She's in the car and watching a special event, and she'd like to identify herself and provide a little bit of information. I'm Ruby Leroy Ertl's wife, who donated the dance hall. Okay. Well, I've always seen it there, but I didn't know it was such an historical until I yes. hear more about it. Now. Right. I didn't realize it either until no. a couple of days ago when yeah. I heard the news from uh, one of the ladies in Cleveland, and uh, yeah. uh, she said the things are happening. I couldn't believe all those huge stones. I said, when you think of it, they must have been put there by horses. And so <laughs> they must have. They, That's all they had to work yeah, with. Huge. I yes. Yes. It's too bad we have to bury them again. <laughs> I said we should find a nice place to put them in the garden, but they're so heavy. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it, it was a wonderful uh, thing that your husband did to donate this uh, to the historical group here, to Pinecrest. That's a wonderful, wonderful gift. We'll have to come in here after a while and yes, check they, it out. There's so much excitement about this building. They're going to really go at it and have a lot of occasions here, Good, so a person yeah. can enjoy it, I guess. That really would be nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I hope they enjoy it. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And I'm a friend of, I was a very good friend of Teresa Nenny. Okay. And she was the daughter of Joe Nenny, her, her father. All right. And uh, he was the original man that had this building built. I see. And when Teresa was born, the building was already there when she was five years old. Okay. She said the building was already there. And uh, and oh, and then uh, now did she own a tavern also? Is she that right? Owned the yeah, she owned the tavern. Well, she and she got she bought the tavern from her mother. Okay. Because her father was killed right in front of the tavern. Oh my gosh. At that time, and he was like maybe 58 years old. Okay. And uh, so then her mother sold the tavern to Teresa Nenning and Jerome Nenning, her brother. Okay. So they ran the tavern together, those two, until Jerome, he had diabetes very bad. Okay. So he died when he was maybe in his early 30s. All right. So then Teresa ran the tavern 
until they wind the road here about what five years ago or eight okay. years ago all right something like that yeah something like that and she was in the business for she said she was a, in the business the longest of any tavern keeper in Manitowoc County. Okay. Which was maybe 60 wow. years. Now I think this is uh, up here on, for, on uh, Mrs. Sessler. Sessler. Okay, no, Mrs. She's Sessler. Probably yeah. The oldest yes. Lady okay. Tending bar or owning a tap bar. She okay. does tend bar too, yes. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, and, uh, and Teresa told me. Like the society was after this building years back. Yes. And Teresa told me, whatever happens to me, she says, do not have the the dance hall removed from the property until I die. All right. She says, after that, you do with it what you want. Okay. As I inherited all her buildings, oh, okay. buildings and sure. whatever property. Sure. And uh, then, well, Chuck, everything. Chuck came and he asked about. Donated to the Historical Society at Pine Crest Village. Sure. And I thought over and I said, sure. I thought there'd be a nice place for it. Absolutely. It's a nice home. And we followed it from this morning on. <laughs> we moved it from, <laughs> from the, the property that was about quarter to eight this morning. And now it's 20 to five, we're here. Very good. And, it's, and, and, and it found us a nice home. Wonderful. And, and where do you live now? I mean, I live in, right? Pretty the, close to that pavilion where the yeah, asshole was. Yeah, right across from the right, from the alley, right across from the uh, Cleveland family restaurant. Oh, so you're on a you would be on the south side of that park. Yeah, on the south, the south side of the park. Yeah. So okay. you got that brick house there. Yeah. Oh, so you could watch your dance hall all the time you wanted well, to see sure. it. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Well, I do thank you, sir, for taking the time to uh, talk to us, and above all, uh, providing this to the Pinecrest Village. Thank, thank you so much. You're here at Pinecrest Village to view the Octagon Dance Hall that was removed from the Cleveland area to Pinecrest uh, Historical Area and we're here to record the location and uh, things that might be happening to it to get it ready for possible use next year sometime. Okay, we've got a gentleman here by the name of Mr. Charlie Bauer, and he'd like to give us a little uh, information on our uh, escapades, if you will, today. Go right ahead, Charlie. <laughs> it's a bright, sunny morning, and we're at the, the, the entrance part of the Pinecrest Historic Village, and we're here today to, to look at how they're going to situate the, the old octagon dance hall that made its way here from Cleveland Oh, two days ago or so, and, and we kind of followed that around, and we're, we're just here to kind of finish up to see how they're going to situate it in there, and, and if they're going to make any adjustments or changes to the building, and we're going to see if we can find somebody that's going to be working on the building that we can kind of interview and talk to. And we notice way in the background there, up there in between the church and the school, you can just catch a part of it through the, through the trees here. And it is a, just a gorgeous grounds here this morning peaceful and quiet. Yes it is and it uh, 
A lot of people do make comments about this location, and the name is very fitting for this uh, location too, Pine Crest. Right, the trees are on the crest of the hill all the way around the park. Okay, well, we'll proceed up there and uh, uh, see what we can uh, obtain for additional information to end the videotape then. Thank you, Charlie. Sure. Thank you. If you'd like to come this way, folks, no. come on. Oh, don't Let's worry about them. Picture. Oh, that, no, that, no. They, they, they're just, we, we ignore them. We ignore them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. Look at the squeeze duck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where was this? This was. Bonnie's Corners. Oh, sure enough. Maybe that's just a new picture. That's great. You know, Sarah would, uh, these are on, on uh, digital, aren't they? No. No, these are, boy, that was fast work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She'd love to see those for the, for the uh, uh, website. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, the building there is not open to the public. That, um, we use it for administration purposes. It's the home of the original owners of the We're here to observe the Octagon Dance Hall in its location here at Pinecrest. We got the gentleman here working to lower the thing. Well, hello there, well, good morning, Don. How are you, sir? I'm just fine. How are you today? Very good, very good. Boy, you you're really tying into this baby. Oh, you bet. <laughs> yeah, you bet we are. Two uh, gentlemen here who uh, looks like they got their sleeves rolled up and ready to tie into a lot of work. And uh, maybe they can introduce themselves and indicate uh, more information for us. Go right ahead, please. Okay. Hi, I'm Don Yanda. Uh, prior to my uh, retirement, I was plant manager of the Mural Company Rolling Mill. Okay. And since January of 99, then uh, been involved with the Historical Society on uh, restoration and uh, repair of uh, buildings out here at Pinecrest. Okay. And as you can see in the background, our current big project is the uh, Octagon Building or Dance Hall that was moved here the other day from uh, Cleveland. Okay, very good. It looks like a big project for it you, sir. It certainly is a big project. <laughs> okay, we got another gentleman here who would like to introduce himself. Go right ahead, please. Uh, I'm Leslie Geeky. I'm a retired dairy farmer. I had a farm out near Newton. Okay. And I think this is my 12th year. I'm out here volunteering. Wonderful. Doing practically anything that comes along. Okay. <laughs> from painting to making a lawn to sidewalk or you name it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so presently you can see what projects we're involved in. Okay. And at this point, where are we on that project? Well, we're ready to put it down in blocks, I guess. Okay. Very good. And uh, Don, uh, what height are we going to obtain or uh, any dimensional things you can tell us at this point? Uh, the beams that are underneath the building, they will be set down. We will put piers in uh, three blocks high, so roughly about 24 inches with a two inch slab on top of that. So the building will be in the neighborhood of about 25 inches from the uh, slab that's poured there right now. Okay. The bottom of the beams. All right. Uh, the exterior of the building is gonna be about 33 inches above the uh, slab. Uh, the beams do not go all the way out to the periphery of the building. Okay. So we have to add another layer of block to uh, bring it up to where we need to be. Okay. Now, as far as the slab itself, were you involved with that uh, at all, Don? No, that was a contractor that did, uh, did that job. Port okay. Slab. All right. What contractor uh, do you uh, know of hand? That was uh, Siler. Siler. Herb oh, Siler. Herb, okay. Yes. Herb Siler. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, as far as the prognostication of what this building will be doing in the future, have you been told anything at this point, what they plan to do with it? Well, it'll be used for a lot of different activities. One that was just re recently held here was the volunteer picnic this past September. Okay. Uh, that was held inside of the town hall next door to us and also on the slab out here. Oh. But certainly uh, in the future, those activities can be done inside the building. Sure, sure. Um, there's other activities. Uh, Harvest Festival, as an example, will be another one that'll be, uh, the building will be utilized for. German Fest is another one. Okay. So okay. there's a lot of uh, opportunities out here to use the building and okay. have a better facility for 
these type of activities. Okay, very good. I noticed on the, since we followed it all the way here that one area was sort of opened up or uh, removed. Uh, do you know anything about that, Mr. Gakey? Well, I guess that was the prior stage area. Okay. Which was quite deteriorated, right, Don? That's right. So that'll have to be rebuilt. That'll be rebuilt by you gentlemen to take care of that? Yes. Okay, very good. And uh, do you have any kind of a timetable as to when this might be finished, or is it as much as you can before winter sets in, that type of thing? Don, anything uh, on that? The only time element that I heard so far, and there's nothing official, but uh, it looked as though it would be about two years for completing the restoration. Okay, all right. And, and that's uh, not official or anything like okay. that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't written this in concrete on the slab, have you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are, are the original 8x8 eight eight timbers that go across, are they all going to stay? They will yeah. stay, that is correct. They will stay? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Except two of them that we're repairing and replacing. Okay. Or I say okay. replacing. All right. Period, uh, bad. Did you happen to see the foundation, the original foundation that they had for it out at, center, yes. at Cleveland? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to tackle that, are you? No. <laughs> did you think that was kind of overbuilt? <laughs> I mean, it had a two-foot stone foundation, the whole perimeter all the way around, right. and then it had seven stone two-foot walls, like every four feet that went across That's right. there. That's right. It was, I mean, elephants could have danced in there, I think. That's right. <laughs> the floor right. didn't bounce. The floor did not bounce. So <laughs> no. Guys and gals were dancing in there. <laughs> By chance, did any of you people have a chance to dance in that dance hall? That, that has to be... More than 50 years ago since it was used. Okay. Yeah, see, yeah. Someone I, said, I remember back 50 years, and I don't remember it being. They okay. talk like around World War II that it was kind that, of the, the, That would be it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you ever uh, observed it as you drove past Cleveland at all and uh, wondered about that building at all? Well, I know from, a, I used to live about four miles north of there. Okay, okay. I worked in Cleveland for a while, so I passed it quite often. Okay. <laughs> I also remember Teresa Nenik. Okay. Okay. Did you stop in at the pub there once in a while? Sure. <laughs> okay. Very good. I guess she was quite a lady that kept everything up pretty well as far as clean and uh, very uh, well-run area. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And uh, other things of, uh, that have taken up your time here at the Pinecrest uh, facility, what other buildings have you been working on, Don? A lot of different ones. <laughs> a lot of repairs that were made this uh, this summer. Okay. And uh, you know, one was the uh, depot. There was some repairs that were made on that. The uh, locomotive repairs to be done. Oh, really? There. Okay. Uh, roof repairs. Yes. On different buildings. Okay. Uh, so it's a case that you get involved in everything <laughs> that anything that needs repair. Did you get to work on the general store? Because yes. they, they had ribbon yeah. cutting back here a couple That's weeks right. ago. Yeah. Les was in there a lot. John was in there a lot. Oh, okay. Uh, working on that project too. It, was that an original tin ceiling you put in there? No, that was. Uh, okay. It was a galvanized ceiling. Yeah. Was World War II galvanized. Okay. Pour that down, and then we put this pressed ceiling up, two so two foot squares. Oh. Okay. okay. Oh, as long as we got you going here, sir, uh, can I have your name, please? John Kambalik. Uh, John, uh, where did you work before you, uh, when you retired? What do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> I just like to know where my tax money is going. <laughs> I'm retired from the shipyards. Oh, okay. 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 Boy. Before that, I had four years in the Coast Guard. Wonderful. And uh, you're uh, a, what do you call a uh, volunteer out here, yeah, too? Yeah, 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 just like the Army volunteer. Okay. <laughs> how, how many years have you been doing this, sir? This is third year. Okay, great. Two years great. on the... On the no, it started with the, with the cheese factory, painting the floor, and okay. the next year we moved over over to the store and worked two years on that. Okay, okay. Normally, how uh, big a group do you work with out here? Is it uh, anybody who can make it? Or? You're, you're seen about the crew. The, about the crew. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the painter, he's over in the, one of the houses over there. Oh, okay. The floor. <laughs> okay, very good. At this time, do you see any major repairs on this particular building coming up uh, right away, that, like we roofs or anything? Or? We don't want to look inside yet. <laughs> <laughs> the inside we have to clean out first. Yeah. Ah, yes. There's a piano in there. Piano in there. Oh, and right. some, uh, fuel oil burners and a yes. range. Yes. Okay. Piano's got to stay in there. 
<laughs> not that one. <laughs> I know. Oh. God's beyond Get, clean. Uh, I got a question for you, gentlemen, because you look a little older than I am. Did anybody ever see that kind of roof system before with that octagon post and the way the well, rafters that, are that's, supported? If no. you go south to here, around Belgium, you'll see octagon barns. Yeah, but I, I, the, the rafter business in here, where the, where the hip rafter ran up to the octagon post, and then on the bottom, they, it's an eight-sided thing, so it's like a spider legs that came back out and caught the rafter halfway, and then another one came back. I, I, I haven't been down. inside, so yeah, I, I oh, can see. Neat. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's neat. Got uh, some fancy framing in there. You betcha. Yeah. First There's only one common rafter that runs all the way to the top, and that's in the center of each, that's right. each octagon. The rest are all jack rafters that that's tie right. into that. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, right. We yeah. observed it uh, <laughs> just prior to the removal. So we got in there, but it was pretty noisy. They were ratcheting uh, bolts and everything into the oh. thing. <laughs> but we had a chance to see it uh, cabled together and so forth, so it was quite yeah. impressive. But uh, again, gentlemen, I have nothing but gratitude to you guys for taking your time and uh, restoring things that are very nice and maintaining them so everybody can enjoy them too. I, I got one other question before you put your off button no, on No here. problem, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Does anybody ever remember, was, were there wood shingles on this building? Must have been at one time. Uh, that, that's a, that's so. a that's about a 20 year old shingle. That's it. There, yeah, Ted, Ted Bondi put this roof on when Bondi was okay. roofing in it. That's but but the inside roof boards are tight together. There's no spacing in there. Oh, so that okay. that shows that there's no. If if you rip this one off, you would think you would see nails from wood shingles. But yeah, yeah. I was kind of checking before asphalt shingles. They had asbestos shingles, and they were popular until about 1900. And this building goes back to about 1900. So we're thinking maybe. They had that kind of shingle on before the asphalt well, shingle got put what, on. What, what shingle? Asbestos? Yeah, yeah the asbestos shingle, yeah. Is, is that, that what was they were? Was... Did them you never tear off unless you burn the building down? Well, they were used up to about 1900. Before that, people probably didn't realize well, no, that asbestos they were, used was after dangerous. Already. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they used it in a lot of shipbuilding and stuff. Didn't no, I mean, they, they used them shingles there. It was good up to the 20s or 40s or even. Really? Okay. Yeah. And uh, what was it called again, Charlie? It was that... some sort of asbestos yeah, shingle. Asbestos shingle. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I never heard of them. like that or something like that. One nail held it up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I would say if the roof boards are laid tight, there was never a wooden roof on there. Yeah, that, yeah, see, that, that, was, that was the way I had that figured yeah. out. Yeah. Well, you can see if you look at yeah. If there was wooden shingles, they might have filled in between the cracks because you have to. Have no, no that, they're, they're just like eight inch boards. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah, and they're tight. Maybe together. they put a whole new roof on there. Well, uh, I, no, I, 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 don't no, I, I don't buy into that. <laughs> <laughs> so when this building is done, there's going to actually be a couple steps up to get into yes, the dance hall. Yes, that's okay. Right. okay, okay, yeah. very good. And uh, the cement block that's going to be laid that you referred to, uh, will you gentlemen be involved in that part of it? Yes. Okay. Yes, you guys can come too. Yeah. <laughs> Jay asked us about three or four times, you know. I can't get Jerry back. off the camera, though. <laughs> I think well, glued to him. Well, he can push block with his camera. <laughs> Boy, Charity, I think we better get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Vandenberg's coming soon, I can hear him. <laughs> well, I do thank you again, gentlemen, for taking the time what to... What are you guys, uh, historians for the village, or what? Actually, we are out of uh, Centerville. We are oh, we're part of the Centerville Greater Historian Group. Oh, that, that's why you come watch that's, your building. That's why we're watching the building a little bit. <laughs> well, you come every day and watch it. <laughs> and nothing will happen bring, except for what? beer and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Let's see, how's far? No, but we've been asked to work there too. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, uh, the Lutzi House Barn, that does take a lot of work on that one. Are you involved with well, that? That's through no, no. the bar, that's okay. Bondi's Corner. Right? There you go, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that a neat? That's the best well, picture right up that day. I, think. I do thank you, <laughs> gentlemen, for taking the time for this interview. And uh, We have one other guy we should introduce you. Oh, here. here's Sit another Henry, one. Henry. To get on camera here. You Hi. want to introduce yourself to the camera here? Yes. Yes. Henry. Sit on the plank. <laughs> Sit on the plank. And, uh, catch a sliver or two there. I'm a jack of all trades. My name is uh, Henry Heyer. Hi, yes. <laughs> Henry Heyer. <laughs> Harder, H -E -R -D -E -R. Okay, Henry. And where did you work before you <laughs> retired? I was a uh, White House Milk Company for 27 years, and then uh, I was plant manager of the Lake to Lake plant in Sheboygan. For oh, really? Oh, wonderful. Retired in 1987. Wonderful. And you come out here to aid the, the area here to reconstruct a few things? I save money. You do. I'm working here, otherwise, I'd probably lose it at the dog track. <laughs> 
I like his theory. <laughs> and you're going to be involved in working on this building also, is that oh, correct? Yes, oh yes. Okay. I've been involved in practically every building that's been moved in here okay. since 87. <laughs> okay, uh, well now I'm going to ask a little personal question now, like, do you have any kind of a trade skill that you're, that you're good at, like electrical or? Uh, no, I'm sort of a warehouse. Uh, <laughs> A wood butcher. I, I, I enjoy woodworking. <laughs> okay, well that's good. That's good. Very good. I'm going to go over this, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you have any kind of a trade that uh, you were in or have any uh, liking for certain things? Not really. Just, just pretty much whatever comes along, like Henry okay, says. We... Come on, Leslie, okay. you were a machinist at one time. <laughs> yeah, I was. I did work as a machinist. Yeah, yeah. Not okay, engineer. that all helps. That all... 12 years, yes. Okay, very good. And uh, you, Don, any uh, special no. skills or likings that you have or hobbies? Or? Woodworking is my hobby. That is your hobby? I do a lot of it at home. Oh, okay. Quite a large shop at home and uh, okay. I enjoy working with wood, so this fits right in. Well, you're good. And I know you have engineering skills uh, that are yeah. very high, so That's right. <laughs> this should be no problem for you. No, no. I well, I, <laughs> I do thank you folks uh, very much for all the information and so forth, and we'll step back once in a while and see how you're doing, okay? Okay, Jerry. Thank yeah, you very much, Don. <laughs> Thank you. That's, this is light. This is... Yeah, them timbers actually sat on that shoulder there. Oh, yeah. And then the, the outside part had like a 2 by 8 sill that sat on the top of the ear. Uh, spraying for powder oh, post beetle that infects yeah. old timbers. Okay. And I'm using a chemical that uh, controls those. Okay. And I do that with uh, several of the buildings here. All right. Uh, annually, just to check to see that uh, there's no further damage done. Okay. And this will control termites and things like that too, or uh, just certain things? It would, but it's, uh, the, the main uh, pest is powder post beetle. Powder? Powder post beetle. Really? I never heard of that one. The name I'm... of that, if you see old timbers, yeah? little, uh, little Dots of, uh, of uh, powder. Yes. Because they bore into the bore into the wood, and it eventually okay. weakens the wood, so it just collapses. Oh, sure, sure. They take all the uh, strength out of it. Yep. Yes. Okay. It yep. Well, very good. That's the way to think ahead and do it ahead of time. Well, it's easy to do, I guess. Yes, that's for sure. Otherwise, <laughs> Otherwise. we're going to be down here. <laughs> A little crawl time. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a hardwood floor okay. two and a quarter inch wide up there. All right. And this would be a subfloor that's down. It looks like so, a, uh, it would be a tongue and groove floor. I would say it's tongue and groove, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because they're all the same width and everything. All right. So that's uh, that's what we're going on right now. All right. And maybe okay. later in the day we'll have the doors opened up, one, one set okay. of doors opened up so we can start getting uh, stuff okay. out of the inside on it. Now that's uh, tri tr three ply timber uh, boards here. Yeah, two by sixes. Two mean? by sixes. Uh, what the purpose of that would be? What now? They replace, that, they replace a beam. Yeah, they replaced beams. This oh. is a replacement for that one over there that was dragged out. Okay. This one right behind me over here has to be replaced also, and the new one is right back here now. Oh, okay. So I can see what you're up to. Okay, yeah. very good. Okay, excellent. Yeah, those are replacements for bad beams. All right, very good. Thank you. A little discovery here we're on an exposed end of this building, and Don will explain what we have here pertaining to that area. Well, for the flooring in the building, you have a subfloor, which was a tongue and groove subfloor that okay. was installed first at right angles to the joist. On top of that is hardwood flooring, two and a quarter inch wide by three quarter inch thick hardwood flooring. Okay. That's laid at a right angle to the subfloor. Oh, okay, okay. 
And thickness wise, what are we looking at there, Don? Three quarter inch. Three quarter inch. Three quarter inch? Yeah. Okay. Three quarter inch. Now you say that it's kind of unusual to have a tongue and groove on the subfloor? On the subfloor, yeah, that's, that's kind of unusual. Yeah, okay. It's kind of a strange story that's in the middle there. The rafters going up and then there's a little one. Well, I never, I never did see. I never did see. Yeah, there's, there's, there's real what do we got for uh, information? I, I, get, I can show you here. This would be the thickness of the stone foundation. Okay. But where they cut this notch out of this 2 by 4 stringer that went across here. All right. And this is the sill plate here. So, okay. So the wall actually came out to here. Oh, okay. And if we go on the opposite side, you see which way the timbers run, you could almost see where, where that shoulder would be, that stone shoulder where the timber would sit yes. on. Yes, yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And this is on the... Um, on end the perimeter. Of the this would be on the perimeter all the way around. All the way around. All the way around. Yeah, okay. Wherever, wherever the, the two by fours ran, they would have been notched out like yeah, this yeah. to accommodate the, the space for stall wall and your sill plate here. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Who is uh, describing some information regarding to a beetle that has been working on this beam here and causing some problems. So what uh, is that beetle called again? It's uh, called powder post beetle. Okay. The name comes from the fact that it makes it makes a powder as it as it makes real small pinhead size holes. Like there's there's one right right here. Okay. And here's some more of that of that uh, powder, a uh, wood powder. Yes. Yes. And uh, the uh, that Duraspan insecticide uh, controls that. Controls that. Okay. Well, that's important to have that done, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the beam that was originally underneath the building. Yeah, and it's deteriorated to the point that they're, that's the new one that they're making. All right, okay. And that's all part of restoration, I guess, to get the best in... in and uh, these, were originally, these were originally old barn timbers that came from a barn somewhere, because you'll see that, you know, the tongue... Yeah. And you'll see the, uh, the, the, yeah, the mortises spot. and yeah. the holes. Okay. It actually was in a barn at one time. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, that's what they used to do years ago with the wooden pins. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. Why, why, was the, why were the benches on the dance hall? Why were they elevated off the floor? What was the purpose of that? So, so that was between dancers. So the dancers. Why, why elevated off the floor? I don't know. Keep, I mean, they keep the dancers away from the people <laughs> sitting on the benches. Huh? Oh, I see. I see there was a platform dinner bench. Yeah, the bench was sitting on the platform. It wasn't oh. on the same level as the dance hall. I was told because much. when a lady steps down, she makes her own bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me. I don't know if that's any proof of that or not. You ask, you're going to ask some old guy. <laughs> Carry on, I guess. <laughs>
Mr. Charlie Bauer here and he's uh, checking on something that's going to be added on to the original building. Go right ahead, please. Yes, we're standing here at, on, on the ground. You can notice the, the new concrete here. And the, it's going to be the place for the, the new band shell or the stage area. And it, the outside wall will probably come out to, to where the two different colors of paint are here, the red and the, or the, the green and the yellow. Okay. And it's the same on the other side there. And pro approximately... 10, 12 feet deep. All right. To back here, you know. All right. So the stage area will be bigger than the original stage that was added on the building. All right. And at this point in time, the people that are working here have not really gotten into the inside of it at all yet. No, they just they just pried the door open there, and they, the, their first thing or duty is they, they want to clean it out inside. Okay. Get rid of the, the stuff that's been left in be, behind. All right. Okay, very good. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, again, we are here inside the building, but uh, this time in a new location, really, at Pinecrest, and uh, we want to solidify some information in regard to the structure, and Mr. Charlie Barr will start us out. Go right ahead, please. I believe you were following down something. You followed at the main rafter, the hip rafter, all the way down to the corner post there. You can see where the rafter sits on top of the, 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 the top plate there. On yes. The wall. Okay. So you follow that back now, and then you see on, on each one of the octagon faces of that, that center post there, yeah. the bottom brace will come out more than halfway down on the hip rafter. Okay. And the, the smaller braces there also catch the common rafter. Okay. And that common rafter is in the center of the opening. If you look towards the door, Jerry. Yes, sir. Where the light is on, that's the only common rafter in the section there. And that one follows from the oh, okay. top of the wall plate all the way right up to the center of that post there. All right. That one also has a small brace up besides the hip rafter. Okay. So it's, it's pretty unique. Every, all the rest of the rafters in here are jack rafters. They, they tie into the, the main hip rafter. Okay. So there's one common rafter, eight hip rafters, and you have eight spider bracelets that follow more than halfway down on the hip rafters, and then from the bottom of this octagon post, you have a support brace that goes up to catch the common rafter and the hip rafter. Okay. And if you look again close at the, at the roof boards, you can see they're tight in space. Yes. And we talked already about the possibility that there were asbestos shingles originally put on this building. Okay. All right. Very good. And we did learn about our flooring. Yes. So we, we got to make a correction on that, that. This is a hardwood flooring up here, and there's a subfloor under it. Okay. All right. We learned a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you, Charlie. Little pieces at a time. <laughs> okay. There's a. I still got some pieces. from the other piano. Yeah. Yeah. Machine shed. Yeah. The gentlemen here are going to be trying to unload this piano out of the door. And, four, and maybe in pieces, I believe. <laughs> They're cleaning the place up a little bit. Yeah, is there a name on that piano at all? Anybody see anything? Yeah, it's S. W. Miller. Oh yeah. Chicago and Sheboygan. Really? Save the name plate. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. That'd be great. Oh, that, is that the front of the piano? That's right. The front. That's right. Yeah. They said it's too bad it got wet. Yeah. Want to knock it apart a yeah, take it apart. Yeah, I think so. Two by ten, there is pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, that that will have to. Okay, the slope. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's a joint.
Hey, there was some, there was some wood in those things. There goes the big piece. Is there a warranty up there? <laughs> There's a, there's, a, there's a spider coming down. I don't know. Okay. Oh, just catch that. Anything? Can you read anything off of that at all? It said this instrument manufactured by us. It doesn't say any year. Well, What's on the end here? It's a lion's face. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Oh, it's hot gun. This is the heavy part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're just going to pry off the top cover, but there's some fancy hinges, which uh, Don is indicating maybe that should be salvaged a little bit. And it looks like they're pretty unique. This thing's got a set of bellows in it. Why would it have bellows in it? Bellows? Bellows. You're kidding. No, here's the, here's the thing right here. I mean, what we have here is a, a 20th. 20th century Sears and Roebuck school desk. This, this are, I would say, is a bonus besides the, the free dance hall. They got, they got a school desk to put into their school. <laughs> there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the seat's missing. It has its place here for the inkwell. The whole thing is made to take apart without breaking it. Okay, this is a coolerator yeah, refrigerator. Was it made in Sheboygan? This is what's inside the piano. Okay. You know, Charlie, what was this uh, building originally? This was the original uh, general store. Okay. Dry goods. Whatever else you needed, medicines they probably sold. All right. Chewing tobacco. Okay. Smoking tobacco. <laughs> Very good. And the uh, what it says, post office is not really. I, I I was told this building came from Cato. I oh. mean from Clark Smiths, but the glass came from the, the post office in Cato when they when Highway 10 went through. They had to remove a building there. That's where they got the, the old glass from. Okay. Very good. The entrance way of the general store and Charlie will show us just a few little things. Just a few little things. Most of your general stores back there had a recessed door and that was so when the customer came out it was raining that gave him an opportunity to open his umbrella before he stepped out into the weather. Okay, very and, good. Uh, when you come into the store here you can see that the shelving on both sides there and, and the counter. On this particular counter here we have a coffee mill We have some glass cases in here. Okay. And I think that's an old-fashioned cash drawer back there. Uh-huh. Could you uh, turn the wheel of the coffee grinder? Sure, I can kind of show you that. And, and this mill was not operated by the customer. This was operated by the store owner. Okay. Or somebody that worked for the store. And, and the, the opening on top here it would slide. Okay. And then you pour the coffee beans in here. There's a mechanism. It's not on this side. The mechanism is on this side here, and that's an adjustment. Oh, for that, that would set your grind how, how coarse or how fine you want your coffee meal. All right. And then you would just turn the handle here, and the coffee would the bean would come through this little throat in here into the grinder. There's a there's a steel grist uh, like a steel grist mill in here. Okay. It's got like little knobs on there, and then the coffee grounds would drop out down here. Okay. And when it was full. Or a pound or whatever, he dumped the coffee grounds into a paper bag and then the customer would pay it. Okay. That's how this particular machine was used. Okay, very good. 
Could you point out something on the ceiling also, Charlie? Yes, the ceiling is just amazing. It's, it's the old tin, uh, tin ceiling. And we were talking earlier, it's, these are all two foot squares that they put up there, but it is metal. It's a metal ceiling. Okay. And the pot-bellied stove in the middle. Pot-bellied stove in the middle, yes. And another thing that was used, which is quite unique, is this old, uh, this little old guillotine-shaped thing here. And, and what they did here was, you would come in and you wanted a piece of plug tobacco. And the plug tobacco came in about a foot length piece here and you only wanted to buy two inches, they would stick that in here, and measure out two inches and they'd move the lever down and that would cut the plug off the plug tobacco and, and okay. the little piece the customer would buy. All right, okay. And in front of you is some sort of a scale? It's a scale, yes. And I can't see that without my glasses on, I'm <laughs> sorry to say, but if I can read this, it's the Standard Computing Scale Company out of Detroit, Michigan. And on here, the, 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 lead, the reading in here, if you were selling something for 10 cents a pound or 20 cents a pound, it, it does the calculation for you. Okay. It's the forerunner of a computer one. Ah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you. Some unique uh, yes, container this, here. This glass case in here was actually an umbrella or cane case. Okay. Where, where do, and that was used to buy uh -huh. cane or umbrella. That's yeah, yeah. quite unique. Now, what do you call that uh, just underneath the ceiling? What is that called? That's a good question, Jerry. It's some sort of, uh, I would say, a, a wooden, or a... wooden balance of some kind. Okay. And I don't know if you would have something on top of that, but it's on it's on both sides of the of the room here. Okay. And way straight past the pot belly stove there, that's an old uh, post office. Okay. It's got the lock boxes on one side. All right. And this was practically the, the, the size that would be in a, in a small community. Sure. That'd be just about enough to take care of the, the residents here in the village. Very nice. This is the, this is a picture here, Jerry. Maybe I should bring it out in. This is, looking at Charlie we're looking at some original photos here from the Ed Pritzel store and this is the building we're standing in and they were taken in 1907 and you can see the gas lamp in the center here and the shelving and the pot-bellied stove by the way right in the center here yeah, yeah. very nice very nice Nice couple here, they uh, uh, decided to help us a little bit with our interview and they'd like to introduce themselves and maybe where they're from. Go right ahead, please. Okay, I'm Steve Lavac and this is my wife, Karen. Hi, Karen. From Cato, Minnesota. Okay. We arrived here last Saturday and we're staying at Fox Hills Resort. All right. Yeah. And we're leaving tomorrow, returning back home, but we're just here on vacation. Wonderful. And we found a brochure for this place and that's what led us to come here and looked interesting and Wonderful. It is interesting. Good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, just yeah. trying to learn a little local history. Yes. Okay. And there's a lot of history out here. <laughs> yeah, I think so, yes. And ma'am, uh, what kind of uh, occupation would you I'm have? I'm self-employed. You're self-employed. Drywall construction. Okay. She 
does, she works for Carlson Craft there, and they're a big printing outfit. Okay. Mankato. All right. She does work there. All right. She's been there for 25 years. Whoa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. And you've been in business for a long time also? I've, yes, about 33 years now. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Very good. Doing dry well. Very good. Well, I'm uh, happy you uh, came out this way and enjoy the, the fine weather we're having here. Yeah, it's not usually that great, yes. but uh, this turned out pretty nice for you. And I do yes. thank you so much for taking the time. Which was the most interesting? Mr. Bauer has uh, asked the question. Go right ahead, sir. Yeah, I was just wondering wh which building did you find the most fascinating out here? Unique or something eye-catching? Myself is, the, I think it's the Sorensen House. Oh, the Sorensen House, yes. yes. Okay. Is that, is that the great one? Yeah. With the upstairs. The upstairs, that one over there. Yeah, I think okay. that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm, interesting. That's I'm going to see if I can come around and uh, have it in the background it's, for you. It's the one with the yellow trim down there, Jerry. Oh, okay, very good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's almost kind of like it's ahead of its time a little bit. <laughs> it's structure, you know. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. them being from, I think it was Denmark. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my choice. Okay. Did you look behind the door in the bank and see the bullet holes in the wall? That are plugged? No, that I didn't. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to <laughs> okay, well, I do again. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, and uh, we'll have this on our uh, Pinecrest uh, historical uh, video then. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay. Very good. All right. Pinecrest, and he noticed something about this particular wagon. Yeah, first of all, it's a pretty old wagon because it's got the wooden hubs yet. Okay. Wooden spokes. You can see the steel thimble on the end of, that, of the wood axle right here. Oh, yeah. This is a steel thimble, and the, the hub itself is wooden. It would just slide on. It's held on by a big square nut on this end here. Okay. So it's on a taper, is that right? It's on a taper, right. right. All right. And this is uh, used for hauling road gravel. These are gravel, what they call gravel planks in here. Okay. And what do they do with the planks then, Charles? I believe they, they just turn them up on edge like that, and that will let the gravel flow in between. Okay. Okay. And it would, drop right, it would drop right through the middle there. Right through the middle, right. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, very good. that I talked to previously and he's got some uh, other things to say and identify himself as things have happened since that time.